The million dollar question, how do entrepreneurs transition from self-employed to owning a business that turns a profit? My name is Chris Waters and this podcast has the million dollar answer. Welcome to CEO Secrets. Hey guys, it's your host, Chris Waters. Welcome to CEO Secrets. I'm super excited for our guest today, Jim Reamley, nationally recognized expert in the field of residential real estate. Uh, at 19 years old, Jim dropped out of college and became recognized as one of the top 1% of realtors nationwide. He listed over 150 homes in a 12-month period by implementing game-changing strategies and deploying some of the latest technology advances. And then at the age of 24, you opened up your first real estate company and grew it to 17 offices, becoming the largest independent real estate company in the state of Oregon. Jim, welcome to CEO Secrets. I can't wait to dive in. I, I have so many questions for you. How are you doing? Uh, I'm excited to be here. Thank you so much for having me on, Chris. You got a great show here. and It's my honor to be with you today. Well, I, I got to ask you, so at 24 years old, did you have any issues recruiting real estate agents when you started your first company? Oh, yeah. I had all kinds of issues. I had every, every issue known to man, brother. Uh, so, yeah, getting people that are the average age in our industry is 56. So to, t to have somebody that's, you know, basically half your age trying to talk you into coming to work for them, it, it was challenging. I will tell you that. Um, what were what were some of your greatest ahas from the recruiting process in the early days? You know, when I first started, I didn't know what I didn't know. And so what I ended up doing is recruiting a lot of new agents in the beginning. Um, is that a good and, move or bad move? Well, it's, it, was, it, it worked. We'll put it that way. Any, any kind of path you take, I always tell agents this, that when you are doing something, everything works. Okay. So everything works. It's just how hard you, how much effort, time, energy, and money you want to put behind it. Everything will work. Um, so it's just a matter of what works the best and figuring out what's the best path. Right. So for five years, I built my company strictly on new agents. And then the, the, you talk about but an aha moment is I realized, um, I think I went to a webinar, <laughs> not a webinar back then, I went to a seminar live and somebody told me, you know, Jim, 86% of these agents you're recruiting are going to fail in the first two years. And I was like, you know what? You're right. And no matter how good a trainer, coach, motivator, leader that I am, these new agents, 80, almost nine out of 10 times would be failing out of the business. So my, it was a massive amount of effort to get a very small group of agents that were productive at the end of the day. So I started to switch my approach to recruiting experienced agents. Um, and once I did that, my business uh, just absolutely blew up. We went from one office to 17 offices really pretty rapidly. What were some of your, and so you're an independent broker, right? I mean, at that point we were, I was an independent broker. Yeah. Uh, we, our company name at that point was all state real estate. Um, and, uh, so we're recruiting against all the national franchises, of course. Um, but there's advantage, you know, there's a weakness in every strength and a strength in every weakness. So you got to look at what's your strength. What were your, so when you shifted the model to going after more experienced agents, uh, how, how did that change your value proposition to recruit talented salespeople? Well, what I learned was that what attracts a new agent is different than what attracts an experienced agent. So um, over the years, we learned to modify that message. And really the three things that I talk to experienced agents about is I say, listen, there's only really a couple different reasons why you'd probably make a move to my company. Number one, I'm going to help you make more money. Number two, I'm going to make your life easier. And my job is to help you do both. And I think I can. And there's really only three reasons why people join my company today. And that is uh, technology. I think we've got the best tech suite in the industry. I think no one can beat us and I'd love to share it with you. Uh, we've got great support staff. Um, we have 18 full-time staff people at my company today that's a, do nothing but support agents uh, in the market and uh, a third is training and coaching so you're an ex you're a great agent you're super high level agent but every agent still wants to get to the next level and I think I can do that I can help you do that but let me just don't I don't want to just tell you that I can do that I want to show you how I've done it for other agents so I will say, look, at here's an agent that started with me two years ago. Here's, there's, this is their trajectory where they were at with the other company. Now they're, here's their trajectory, and I'll show them on closed transactions. Here's another agent, same thing. Another agent, same thing. So our office, uh, 
so I just want to back up just a quick step. I, I have that 17 office network, which I sold in 2006. I got lucky before the crash. I sold it, got out. The teacher for NAR for 10 years, um, still sold a lot of real estate, had a lot of fun. Then I got recruited to come down and run a company in Southern Oregon that had 39 agents. We've now built that to 190 agents and we're in the top 500 companies in America. So this is at a population base of 80,000 uh, people. And we're competing with companies in LA and New York and Atlanta and Georgia and Chicago. Uh, so, I mean, we've done really well. And people ask me, what, what does that mean exactly? And I, when I'm coaching and I do a lot of brokerage coaching, I say it boils down to per agent productivity. So that's what you're, that's the ultimate recruiting uh, premise is per agent productivity. I appreciate you adding that layer of context there because I talked about the beginning of your career yeah, and, and, did not, and I didn't talk about how you eventually <laughs> led to selling that business. Yeah. Um, I want to ask you a quick question specific to that. What sure. kind of, what kind of multiple did you get paid up on your brokerage? Like what were you doing from a net income perspective? And then can you share what you actually sold it for? I imagine your NDA and all that stuff has yeah, long I, expired. So, well, <laughs> I still am held to it a little bit, so I can't tell you the exact price, but I will tell you the price that, because uh, uh, I just recently sold this company that I built. I was also an owner and I've sold that company three years ago. Um, so I will tell you in general, and, and what applied to me is that real estate companies sell for a multiple of between two and three X net income. Um, so in the, the difference between the two and the three, is stability of income are you growing are you shrinking stability of agents how long have the agents been with the company uh, the tenure of agents uh and market share and market dominance in the market so those are what kind of add up into that two to three multiple do you think do you think um people should be or business owners operators out there should be mindful of an exit strategy or should they you know because it, like, it's a very it's a good like the real estate brokerage model is a good like cash generating cash flow positive kind of business mm-hmm. although although labor intensive it is a good cash flow generating business yeah. and but the multiple is not very good um so right. do you think people should be even thinking about going into this from a from a um you know, from, from a M and a perspective? Mm, well, I, I think if you, if I was coaching somebody and said, you have two choices, two lanes, you can go down, you can go down the lane of opening um, or running a really successful team or opening your own brokerage. There's no doubt the teams will make more money than the brokerage. Mm-hmm. It's just the way it is. The vast majority of commissions in most cases is the team is getting 80% roughly of the commissions and the brokers is getting 20% of the commissions. And then it has to make a profit over here on this where the, the team leaders got 80% over here. Right. Sure. That being said, uh, if you're just passionate about helping people and coaching people and building something, uh, a real estate office can be very rewarding and fulfilling on that level, but you have to make a conscious decision. You have, you have, and I coach a ton of brokerages and it's kind of my specialization is coaching brokerages. But when I'm coaching a brokerage, um, I, I tell them you, you, there's no middle ground here. You, there's <laughs> the middle ground is the death zone. So offices that are in like a 20 to 30 agent range in most markets are, in, are they're just walk, they're like a dead man walking. They're going to fail at some point. Mm-hmm. You either go small with this is a boutique, but a boutique can be 20 or 30 agents in more of a metro market. I mean, that could be, it can be 50 agents in a more metro market. But you either go boutique or you go really big and you go for it. Yeah. And there's no middle ground. Yep. There are a couple of things going through my head uh, yeah. around disruption technology. Before we get into the disruption and like what's what's the vision look like in your eyes, let's first back up and let's talk about the technology stack. I know that was like a big thing that really helped you uh, grow and and you know was a big value proposition for your agents. What um, you know what does the current technology stack look like for you that um, is kind of the best in class suite for your agents? So for us, uh, you know, definitely every agent gets a beautiful custom website. They get an app uh, customized to them. Uh, We have a CRM in the background that is the hub of their business. What um, CRM are you using? Well, we have a, we have a, we're a regional franchise. So we have our own CRM that we built. Um, It's called my, it's called, it's called my desk. My desk. Um, Yeah. Um, And so the way it works is that somebody lands on their app, 
the corporate site or their website, everything's being tracked in the background. And then they can do all their drip campaigns, all their tracking of uh, clients within that platform. Notes, all those things, uh, triggers, it's all built in. So that's essential, right? You gotta have that stuff. That's like a baseline. Everybody's gotta have that, but you'd be shocked. I would say 80% of offices and agents don't even have a baseline. Like they don't even have that. Or if they have it, it's terrible. <laughs> how does how do you think it how do you think that system compares to some of the competitors out there like um sierra interactive boomtown commissions inc chime uh again, there's a million of them yeah yeah i mean there's a ton of them like how does it do you think at this point they're all pretty much equivalent and it's just a tool in your tool belt i think a lot of that is true there are some there are some companies that roll out incremental uh advantages that that everybody that catches up to a good example is lion's desk with uh, rolling out uh, texting within their platform, which is a massive advantage. So you can you can now text out of that uh, all your client database, uh, whereas a lot of the CRMs still don't have that technology built in. Um, so there's definitely incremental um, changes that happen over time, but I think everybody kind of catches up. I th- here's what I think is CRM though itself is, uh, and I coach tons of agents that, uh, you know, when the, my first step with all of them is, do you have CRM? And 80% of them will say no. <laughs> so, you know, it's like the first step in like professionalizing the industry is you got to have CRM. I don't care what you use as long as you use it. Um, and so that's like step one. We use a lot of other tools. So in terms of the tech suite, um, we do use cloud CMA for our CMA um, platform. We also have gone and are starting to use a system called BuySide. Um, I don't know if you've heard of buy side. Um, mm-hmm. So what buy side does is it creates what's called a BMA. We always used to using CMAs in the industry. A BMA is if you want to list your house, or you're thinking about it. I can come to you and say, okay, here's the comps. There's everything else on CMA. Show you that. But let me show you the buy side demand of how many buyers are actually interested in a house like yours in your neighborhood. And so mm-hmm. it takes, it scrapes data from Motor.com, Zillow, Homes.com, and it will show all the activity in the neighborhood then by price range, then by bedrooms, and it kind of narrows it down into a funnel. It's actually inverted pyramid. And then in our company, at the very bottom of that pyramid, will say, here's how many buyers are working with a John L. Scott agent, that's the name of my company, that are interested in a home in your price range and neighborhood right now. Um, is, so is, it might be like 35, 40. Is the website for that, just for people that are watching, is that um, getbuyside.com? Is that yes, the is. same company? Yes, yes. Okay, is. great. Um, Cool. Now, I will say that you're, if that's a brokerage level product. I don't believe at this point individual agents can sign up. Uh, but there are a lot of franchises have signed up. I know Berkshire Hathaway signed up. Um, so there's some other franchises up there. Jim, I apologize. What I, You mentioned this earlier, and I, and I don't think I heard you. What's the um, current franchise network you're a part of? Uh, John L. Scott. That's John a, L. It's Scott. A, Scott. It's a regional franchise, small, 110 offices in the four states. Well, the 110 franchise location, that's quite a bit. Yeah. <laughs> How long did it take them to scale up to 110 offices? Uh, 90 years. <laughs> 90 years. <laughs> yeah, almost. They, were built, they started the company in 1931. It's based in Seattle. And uh, the current owner, that's a great story, actually. The current owner is the great grandson of the guy that founded it, as you would guess, John L. Scott. Uh, that his grandson, Lennox Scott, uh, is the current owner of the company. Interesting though, and part of my recruiting is knowing your company story. So if you're a brokerage owner, you gotta know the company story and the value points. So here's one of my stories I tell around the company, and I just tell this because it's it's a way for me to sell the companies. I'll say, unlike most franchises, Lennox owns 30-ish of the 110 offices. And so he has, uh, by far, has the most skin in the game of all of us. I I run the largest uh, affiliate, but he has the most skin in the game. So when he makes a decision, the person that's most affected isn't me, it's him. And I love that relationship. It's a very unique franchise relationship. Are you in a position where you're trying to uh, help get additional franchisees in the network? Uh, I do help on occasion. It's not my job. I'm not paid to do it. I just do what, it occasionally. What is their strategy to get additional franchisees and grow that their, their business? Uh, they're launching into, uh, they just launched into California. So that, you know, we're, we're in Oregon, Washington, and Idaho. I and guess it's all, what uh, I mean, what yeah, I mean yeah. is more from like a tactical perspective, like not like going and getting registered yeah. with, through the FTC in that right. state, but like, <laughs> like what are they doing from a lead generation perspective, if you will, to find a broker that wants a business in the box? Like what are they doing to find those people that are going to take their business in the box and, you know, execute? 
Well, I think it's all hand to hand combat when it comes. It's, I look at it just like recruiting. When you're recruiting franchisees, you're, it's just like recruiting an agent. And it is, it's truly that. It's hand to hand combat. It's actually having conversations with people individually in every market. And I know that sounds old school and people say, well, we're going to build a funnel and we're going to do this and that. It doesn't work. If you're trying what, to sell a franchise, you have to actually physically talk to people. What, um, what, what made you go? I mean, you have so much experience, like you built up this huge company, sold in 06, sold another company. Like you got very entrepreneurial. Like what was the compelling reason why you went to go work for this franchise system? And, and not to like say that it's not a great business. And by the yeah. way, I'm sorry, I don't really know a lot about it, but it's like, it's been open a long time and there's people mm -hmm. that have franchise networks that have grown like KW, Remax, et cetera. In a fraction of the time they've grown to, you know, exponentially, you know, larger sizes. And sure. you're this, you're a very well spoken guy, super smart, had a lot of success, great track record. Like why go join this company? What was the compelling reason for you? It's a, it's a great question. I think the compelling reason for me is, first of all, uh, it's, it's, it was location-based. I've grown up in Oregon. I love Oregon. And I wasn't going to move and, and travel. I had opportunities with actually with K-Dub to become a part of their network years ago at their, more of a ground floor. Um, I, didn't, I didn't do it, not because I don't think K-Dub is a great company. It is a great company. And obviously, they did it very well. Um, but for me, it was a lifestyle. I have four kids and I wanted to stay in Southern Oregon. And uh, so that, that was a big part of the decision for me. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it's all in where you're at in your career. For me, uh, I wanted to um, be at a place where I could be with my kids every day. And that was pretty much it. That, that was the reason. Cool. For anybody watching this that is interested in coaching with you, maybe they own a brokerage. Um, how, how do they reach out to you to learn more about what you're doing to help people in the industry? And uh, so people can leverage this amazing knowledge base you've built over the last, oh, thank you know, you. what is it, 25 plus years? Um, 31 years. 31 year. years. 31 years. Yeah. yeah. So uh, what, how can people find out more? Yeah, they can, um, they can go on my, my coaching website, which is erealestatecoach.com. Okay. And uh, they can reach out through that. There's a, there's a contact me section, but I'm going to, I'm going to be gutsy here and give you my cell phone too. Here you go. Ready? Oh, wow. Okay. I'm <laughs> actually going to, I'm going to save let's, this let's number too. Uh, let's, let's, uh, I only fingers have crossed here. <laughs> I'm going to, so, I'm going to, I'm going to do, I'm going to write this down myself. All right. Do it. 541. Okay. There you go. 541 890 okay. 541-890-1929. That's bold, man. I, I, I bet we probably, we, go for it. we've been having to get about 3,500 streams, you know, <laughs> per episode. So, Let's see what um, so, but uh, what's the website again for them to check you out? Uh, it's erealestatecoach.com. Okay, cool. Coach .com. Right. For those, well, I, uh, I saved yeah. your number and you can definitely count on me, Connie, because I'm going to follow up with <laughs> you. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Jim, yeah, this, sure. is, this has been great, man. There's, if it wasn't for people like you, like, I mean, you know, like the, the compound effect of like, you know, just the agents you've helped and like, you know, like I think about the mentors that have, you know, helped me and like, I mean, God, if I hadn't have found them, I would have been completely lost. Right. And so it's, you know, like, you know, you're one of those people that's like, you know, I don't want to use the word founding fathers because right. in, in, in AR got started in 1908. Right. But um, it's like, you know, like, you know, I just, I appreciate people like you because you're, you're helping have such a big positive impact on this industry Thank and you. like actually giving people clarity and like how to grow and like help them, you know, not make the same mistakes you did. Right. Yeah. So anyways, man, I, I appreciate all you do to help level up the industry and I appreciate you being on CE secrets today. My, my pleasure, my friend. Thank you for having me. Thanks, Jim. Hey guys, that's this episode of CEO Secrets. Don't forget, you can always watch this live uh, via video on YouTube or uh, subscribe on uh, Apple iTunes. So um, again, if this is your first time watching, be sure to hit that subscribe button either on YouTube or iTunes and uh, stay tuned for our next episode to come. Bye everybody.